Hi, this video is another A-level revision video for production aids, how they are used in manufacturing and, well, covering the main three that you need to know for the AQA spec. So firstly, what are production aids? The main three that you need to have a good awareness of are uh, jigs, fixtures and templates. So production aids are tools that are used by manufacturers to ensure that their products are identical. Um, it also helps with things like efficiency um, and also helps with the quality of the final product as well. So we're going to talk through each of these three. The first one is pretty simple, it's templates. Um, jigs and fixtures are slightly more uh, complex, but we'll go through each of those in turn. Okay, first one being templates. So these are uh, predominantly used in batch production. So obviously um, you wouldn't use this in match production. You wouldn't get your piece of um, wood or paper or whatever and get someone to trace something out hundreds and hundreds and thousands of times. Obviously there are other options um, for doing that, more uh, CAM options. But for smaller runs of products, things like um, you know, you might be making uh, simple packaging, might be custom packaging, might be custom products, um, could be clothing. And in clothing, they're quite often called patterns, um, which has a slightly different meaning in product design. But the templates that they use in textiles are called patterns. And these are usually cut out shapes. Now, we use a lot of these. Um, so they're used in one off as well, quite a lot. And we use a lot of templates in product design. You might laser cut something out on the, uh, you know, laser cut something out of card and then trace that onto a uh, material so that you can then cut it out accurately. So you would obviously, they're self-made, they're drawn around to transfer a design. Um, and if you want to keep using the template, what they sometimes do is they make the template from, um, it could be made from acrylic, it could be made from uh, even things like sheet steel. Um, and if you think to yourself, why would they bother making the template out of these materials over something like paper? Well, if you think about it, if you're going to be constantly tracing around this, maybe a hundred times, you don't want the ledges to get frayed and bits to come off and parts of the template to break. So by using acrylic or metals or, or even wood, um, you can make a template that is going to be more consistent, Changes the shape isn't going to change, um, but that's what templates are. It also, for all of these, they reduce uh, human error. That's the big advantage. Rather than someone coming with their little metal rule and measuring things out and taking forever, and even, you know, I've measured things and I thought I've been correct, I've cut something out and it's been completely wrong, it can cost you a lot of time and a lot of money. Right, the next one we're going to talk about is a jig. So uh, it's uh, a jig is slightly different to a fixture. Well, it's quite a bit different to a fixture, actually. But a jig is a tool that specifically um, holds the workpiece and guides. This is the important bit. It guides the cutting or the machining tool for a specific operation. So quite commonly, you see drilling jigs like this. Um, or you might see a router, um, a router jig. So a router is kind of like a drill, but it kind of moves around in different patterns. So you might do like a, a cutout from a piece of wood or something like that. So um, basically, uh, you can see there is a little hole here where the drill is actually guided, you know, into the workpiece to drill that hole in a specific place. Um, sometimes they can include things like depth stops as well to stop you drilling too far, um, but they can hold the material in a very specific place so that you can keep um, drilling consistently the holes in the required part that you need. Um, so the, like a drill jig is a really good example of that. Um, a really common use for them is if you were doing dowel joints you might have a jig that goes on the front of a bit of material which has two holes and that would guide where the drill um, would go into and this jig might fit around the bottom of your piece of wood you'd be able to take that off and put it on another one and drill 
two more holes that would then line up perfectly. And I don't know why I'm talking about that here because literally it's right there. So look, that's what they're doing there. So that's what a, uh, a jig is. Now, fixtures are a little bit different. Um, these are used in more kind of complex uh, manufacturing. And we have uh, fixtures in the work in the workshop, things like the um, uh, the clamps that we use on the drills, the pillar drills, those heavy clamps, those kind of like a fixture. Um, they do not guide the um, cutting tool at all. They don't guide the drill bit. But what they do is they hold and they support and they locate the thing that you're working on, the workpiece. Um, during the machining or assembly process. So here you can see this is a car door that is this whole thing here, this massive thing, all of this here is the fixture. And all of these little clamps are holding this specific piece of uh, work in place. Now that's quite a complicated shape. And if that wasn't held properly and you tried to drill it or do something on it and it slipped, that would cost you a lot of money and time because you'd have to replace that part. Same with this here. Um, you can see that it's holding something quite complex and then it allows you to perform other machining, um, you know, processes on it. So you might be able to drill holes, you might be able to use uh, finishing techniques, you might be able to cut parts out. So fixtures are all quite unique to a particular shape um, of the product that you're working with, especially in manufacturing. We have ones in school that you can use with lots of different types of um, uh, products obviously but they're not quite as tailored so they don't always hold things in quite um, the best way and you may have noticed that when you've tried to drill something uh, on the pillar drills so fixtures are tailored to be unique to the particular shape holds it nice and still stops things like safety problems money time we're going to talk through these this really really quickly I've got um, this slide and one more to quickly show you um, the difference is between a jig and a fixture. So the jig is primarily used to guide the cutter to a particular place. The jigs can also hold and support the workpiece as well. Jigs are usually much lighter weight. Um, sometimes they can be only held by hand and they don't need to be clamped. Um, a jig is considered much easier to use, so less skill is required to operate it. Um, you don't need any additional devices for locating the cutter. Um, so the jig is literally all you need and it's quite often used in drilling, uh, boring, which is pretty much the same as drilling, just bigger. Uh, reaming, which is where you, uh, I can't actually remember what reaming is. I think it might be like removing the edge of a hole to make it cleaner. You might have to tell me about that. And tapping is where you make an internal uh, screw thread. So jigs are used quite often for drilling holes, things with holes. OK, now a fixture. Like we said before, it rigidly grips, supports and locates um, a particular piece that you're working on in its intended orientation. Uh, it's nothing to do with the cutters, so it's just to hold it in place. It's commonly much heavier and more robust. Um, it's clamped firmly. Um, it has to with, quite often withstand a lot of vibration from the cutting tools. These require a bit more skill because you have to clamp everything in the correct place. You might need a few more bits and bobs to make sure uh, that things are in the correct places. So this is quite often used with things like milling and routing and shaping slots and all sorts of things and planing. So you can see it's a little bit more complex what you're doing with these things. Right, last slide I'm going to talk about quickly, and this is a really important slide. So if you've fallen asleep, this is where you need to wake back up. The reason that we use production aids, they reduce things like scrap material. You want to be reducing your scrap at all points, really aiming for that lean manufacturing um, kind of uh, process where you are reducing all of the costly uh, waste in your manufacturing process. You get improved accuracy and repeatability of the process. You can do it over and over and over and it's accurate. They get rid of a lot of human error. So they eliminate the need for measuring and marking out and lining stuff up and setting up each of the work pieces. Therefore, it makes it much quicker, um, actually. So um, it reduces the cycle time, how long it takes to uh, make each of the products. 
and also the setup time. So if you think when you normally drill a hole in something in the workshop, you measure it out, you mark it, you might use a center punch to make a mark, uh, you set up the drill, you align it, that takes a long time. But if you use a production aid or a jig, if you're doing a hole, you can do that a lot quicker. It reduces the level of skill required. Um, you save money on skilled workers, which is very sad, but there we go. And also removes, again, human error. We get increased productivity. You can make more products because it's quicker. Um, you also, this is quite an interesting one. It reduces the need for um, quality control um, inspections, but you'd still do them, but maybe not as often. So you wouldn't have to keep checking things after each stage because you're using production aids. You know that the accuracy is going to be there and quality control is very expensive. So um, this can help reduce the amount of quality control checks that you need to make. Reduces accidents. This is very important um, because your workers aren't trying to hold something that's really impractical. Um, things aren't going to flick off or spin or suddenly fall over. You've got something that's going to hold it nice and steady. And especially if you're working in aerospace or automotive industries where you're working on really heavy components like engine parts, these can be easily machined when you use things like fixtures. Right, I hope that was useful. See you on the next video.